Here we go. Live. From the Queen City Queen Studio. City. Oh my God. With the Deacon. Live. Right now. Ready? Yes. Hey guys, on today's show, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on the radio. Is that your house? <laughs> fucked up already. Already fucked up. Let's try it again. Get your words together, you stupid son of a bitch. It's always good. Live. Live. From the Queen City Studio. Oh my God. With the Deacon. Live. Right now. Ready? Yes. Welcome back, guys. On today's show, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on the radio. Is that your house? I keep skipping over that. I'm going to do it again. going to do it again. I'm going to do it again until I get it right. Uh, stop. Oh, I didn't even hit record on that. All right, here we go. Live. Live. From the Queen City Studio. With the Deacon live. Right now. Ready? Yes. Welcome back, guys. On today's show, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on the radio. Is that house yours to sell? I'm out of jail, but I'm still on probation, and it's a Bachelor in Paradise weekend for myself. All these topics will be discussed on this episode of Deacon Live. How are you? How are you? Welcome back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Hope everyone's doing okay. Hope everyone's doing all right. Can you feel the can you feel the the, the temperatures changing out there? I know here in North Carolina, uh, we're just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a beautiful little town we like to call Marshville. It's a little cooler, a little crisper out there. Uh, the weather is getting kind of nice, but I, I think the weather is going to jump back up here by the end of uh, or the beginning of this week coming or the end of this week coming somewhere in the next four or five days. The weather's going to change a little bit, but right now. We're sitting at about a cool, I think it was high yesterday, 82 degrees. That was nice. Uh, we got the house all open up, which is nice to do. You know, when you can open up the house and get some of the funk that you've accumulated uh, over the uh, <laughs> summer months. But, I mean, yeah, the the house is open. Dogs are loving it. They're laying right there by the by the windows. And as the air comes in and air goes out and stuff. And we light some candles and, you know, get the house kind of. Not spring cleaning, but you know, just get some of that funk out of the out of the house that you get that you get trapped in there. And the AC is not running, which is good. That'll cut down on your electric bill. But for the most part, yeah, I mean, uh, house is a uh, it house is wide open. Air is blowing through. Nice crisp day out there. Um, I know that some people, my friends in Florida, uh, it's been raining on and off, on and off. Uh, because of the hurricane and it's tropical storm season it's hurricane season so they're getting all the rain and everything going through there you know you can set your watch by it three o'clock three two one boom it rains three two one in 30 minutes it goes away or goes somewhere else and it's out of your neighborhood but so for the most part and you know something we haven't done here in a long time and i know a lot of people have been asking me to do it big stretch and the hands above the head big breath in big breath out Woo! Oh man, I have so much has gone on this past um, five or six days since we talked last, and uh, I got a lot to talk about on this episode of Deacon Live. So I want you to be part of it. I want you to uh, join us at any given time, and the way you do that is to call the phone lines at four zero seven four four eight 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 zero zero Texas Live at any time at the Queen City Studio. Located just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Like I said, in a beautiful little town we like to call Marshville. And one thing that I, I do stress that you guys can be part of is the Be Heard section. And I, I say it time and time again. Uh, go to ProfitRadio.com and there's a little bar at the bottom of the screen that says Be Heard. Click on that. Opens right up. You can send us a message right here to the station and we'll play it live on the air. That's the way it works. If you don't want to, you know, if you catch the podcast a little bit later or... You know, you have a question about something in the past podcast, by all means, uh, drop us a line there. It comes right to my email. It pops up. I get a little notice on my phone. I listen to it, and we play it on the air. It's that simple. So, And there's some other ones that come through live. Uh, I go through them, and then I answer some of the questions are a little bit too more personal, so I answer them uh, directly to them. Uh, I actually got off the phone with uh, uh, my realtor. I say my realtor. She's not my realtor anymore. 
and she was she had I had some questions for her and she had some questions for me and we went back and forth and I'm like um you know you want to go on the air with this and she's like no 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 I just wanted to you know square things off with you and your show and stuff so there you go and we'll get into that a little bit later on the show so for the most part I have been uh <laughs> it's 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 a uh, it's a bachelor in paradise season for me right now and I say season <laughs> next four days my wife has actually driven down to Florida. Speaking of beautiful weather here, she's so mad. She uh, Actually, she flew down to Florida. She's so mad that uh, she had to leave this weather because we've been dealing with 97s, 95s, 96 all day, all week long. And all of a sudden, this cool front comes in, and she's like, I got to go to Florida. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. And I waved her, and I throw her kisses. you know, And uh, she's down there, and it's raining. It's, I know it's raining because <laughs> she called me and told me, ah, it's awesome. I can't do anything with my hair. But it's so humid out here and it's muggy and it was beautiful this morning and now it's raining. And I'm like, yeah. And I talked to her about an hour ago. An hour ago was about 2.30. But I mean that it's – she's mad because I'm up here and it's beautiful and it's a beautiful, beautiful weekend out here at the French. Uh, the horses are doing well. The, the chickens are doing well. The puppies and all the animals are doing well. And so I am bachelor bacheloring it up here at the studio. And what do you guys do? I mean, uh, I've talked about this, uh, I think, a couple years ago. And I got some of your input of, you know, what do you do when you go grocery shopping? Because you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, meal plan for two people. You're only meal planning for yourself for the next four days. She'll be gone for four days, so. She'll be down in Florida. And so what do I do? Well, I grabbed a couple of frozen pizzas. Duh. Uh, I know some of you guys would be like, you know, well, I'm, I go out and, you know, hit the, not the nightlife, but I go to this restaurant and sit at the bar. Or I go to that restaurant and sit at the bar. Or, or, But you forget where I'm at, where I'm located, where the Queen City Studio is located. It takes about, it's 20 miles, 20 to 25 miles just to get to something. Just to get to anything that has some kind of nightlife entertainment or nighttime, you know, atmosphere. We don't have anything around here. So, kind of, I entertain myself. So, what do I do? I put my headphones in. I find my um, favorite song on Profit Radio. And I listen to it. And I, I mow the lawn and trim the trees and feed the chickens. I, I know it's exciting. And then, you know, it's one of those things where... I, I we are sitting on the the island, the breakfast island with my wife, and she's like, "So what are you gonna do?" I said, "You know, you all you have good ambitions when you know that the spouse is leaving. You know, as soon as you leave, I'm gonna party it up. I'm gonna call all my friends. They're all gonna come over, and then it's kind of like when you say when the kids are out of the house. You know, all right, we got the whole house to ourselves, and then what happens? Seven thirty, eight o'clock. You're you're sitting in your lounger, head up, mouth open, sleeping." <sighs> Well, that's exactly what I did last night. I literally played my PlayStation 4, which I told my wife not to buy me this past <laughs> Christmas, but she did. And, of course, this is what I knew was going to happen. So I'm sitting there playing Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty. And then I have to stop and I have to feed the dogs. And then play, 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 and then stop and I have to go out. And then everyone gets fed on a time schedule, except for me, except for the deacon. I get to eat whenever I want. And so I'm playing my PlayStation. Oh, it's time to go out there and feed the chickens. Go feed the chickens. And then you have to turn around and lock the chickens up because the chickens at night go up in their house. They know exactly. It, it, it's penned in. But they climb up the ladder and they get in their house. Not a straight up and down ladder. It's more of a ramp than, <laughs> than a ladder. And, you know, and then you have to feed the horses and the horses. And they, they know exactly what time they get fed because they're sitting on the rail there. And I took a picture a while back on the Facebook page. And it looked like a soup kitchen line. There's three horses standing on the fence, you know, uh, ass to nose, nose to butt, butt to tail, whatever. And they're waiting for me to come out there and feed them. And you say, well, well, what are you feeding them? Don't they eat the grass? Don't they? Well, they have, it's kind of like their amino protein powder that they have to have twice a day. Or they become like big fat, they look like cows. And our horses are trained and they go through a training regiment and stuff. So they have to have the, like their vitamins and their proteins and yada, yada, yada. You have to do it twice a day. It's a diet. It's a dietary thing that the horses have to go through. Plus, it, their digestive gets kind of sensitive with stuff. So 
But yes, for the most part, they eat grass and they eat grass. But there's little pills and not pills, but protein granule stuff that I give them. I know it's exciting, very exciting. You know what? What? Uh, you know what else is exciting? I was talking about. I had to feed myself, so I had some leftovers uh, from the day before, and I forgot. Uh, I, I had some chicken. I had some stuffed chicken that I made, and uh, so I had two of those. And uh, I wanted peas. I love the Lasore peas. And I forgot, I forgot like the other night, I was cranking it down on on the peas because it was leftovers. I had two leftover. Anyways, I'm cranking down on the handle thing, and the handle snapped off of our can opener. And that didn't have the Lasore. I guess it's not on board when you buy like the big eight pack at Costco. They're not on board with the pop top cans yet. I don't know why everything else is a pop top can. Freaking beefaroni, raviolis, all those have pop top cans, but the Lasore peas did not. So I had no last night. I had no can opener, and I want you to guys here. I'm gonna flip flip screens here. So I want you guys to look at the can. <laughs> this is the results of me opening a can of Lasore peas with a. I don't know. Is is this a? Can, it's not a can opener. It's a thing. It's a. It's a. You know, about four inch piece of metal, and one end has got where you, your mom used to poke the juicy juice can. You know, she poke a hole in one side and then poke a hole in the other side, so it would pour out right, pour out quicker. So I had to sit there and literally like around the corner, and it looks like a friggin' people are. I must have like fifty seven comments on the, on my Lasorda Peak can because I took a picture of it and I'm like going, it looks like a weapon the can now looks like a weapon it's got like teeth and stuff on it so there everyone's giving me a hard time oh couldn't you know get into the peas and you must have needed the peas you wanted the peas you had to have the peas and everything peas and there was puns of peas and world peas peas and you know bits plea peas or <laughs> a bunch of so there you go that's on the on the uh the facebook page there and make sure you follow us, and the way you do that is go to ProfitRadio.com and click on all our social networks, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and I'm going to get into the YouTube here in just one sec. Uh, but there's my Lasura pea can, <laughs> peas can, and I like them with lots of butter and lots of pepper on it. My wife doesn't like that way, but that's the way I like it, and it's a bachelor weekend for me, and that's what I'm going to have. And when we come back, I'm going to get into some other details that uh, came up this past uh, couple days and some serious stuff that happened to me. And you're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. Give us a call here at the station at 8 time at 407. Ow, shit. Knocked that right off the damn thing. Sorry. Hold on. I'm having testicle difficulties here. Hold on. I know. There goes that. Got it. Give us a call here at the station at 407-448-8800. We are live in the Queen City studio located in Marshville, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And you can join our membership only page. And the way you do that is to go to ProfitRadio.com and go to members only. And what you get there is a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. And it's not you know necessarily behind the scenes, but we get bad calls. Um, telemarketers that call here to the station. And there's a lot more other stuff up there. And you join there, sign up for that. And it's as little as a dollar a month, and then you can get all the, the funny as I adjust my shorts here <laughs> live on the camera. And then I wanted to talk about the YouTube thing in just one sec. But um I was talking about being a bachelor, and you know, when you're home by yourself, um for someone who you know, when you when you're constantly around people all the time, you know, whether it be your wife or your kids and stuff, when you're home by yourself, you, you kind of do weird and odd things. That you, you know, that you, no, one, you, no one's going to see you, right? So you just do odd and weird things by yourself. Well, this family here set up a camera in their house. And I know you guys have probably seen it a million times, but I think it's so funny that um, this family put up a, a just a regular camera in their house and wanted to <laughs> see what was going on with their dog. And the dog is actually, you know, the dogs that left at home aren't my dogs. I have two bulldogs and they just sleep on the couch. Oh, they just sleep, 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 sleep. Um, they're not really ambitious as far as doing anything. Uh, you know, oh, you have to go to the bathroom, come on outside. And then they go right back and find their little spot and they sleep all day. Now this dog here has found its own little 
who knows how it came across this, whether the, the family uh, got them got the dog involved. But when the family's not that around and you don't have any responsibilities as far as people um, that you need to take care of, you kind of just take it upon yourself to do stuff to entertain yourself. And this dog has found it. <laughs> so this is a little beagle. This is Buddy. They call him Buddy Mercury, the piano playing dog. He sings and plays. He is an international superstar. And he is head back. <laughs> head back singing everything. It's a sad song. <laughs> so that that's Buddy Mercury. When he's home by himself, he likes to play the piano and sing his songs and do all the stuff that dogs do when no one else is around. <laughs> Hopefully not pee on the floor. God almighty. So I got into a situation that I'm going to talk about right now. Now, I always get, I find myself in weird situations at all times. Now, give me a sec while I have to figure out how to switch screens here. So, as you guys know, I, you know, I, I, I do the this podcast and I do it on a weekly basis, about a rotating every five to six days. It goes up on iHeartRadio, it goes on Spotify, it goes on iTunes, and I think it, from there it just spiderwebs out to, I think we're on 50 some odd platforms. Now, one thing that I have been starting recently is because a lot of people are wanting to see like live video feeds of what goes on in the studio. You have special guests, if you just want to see what's going on here in the studio, what I'm wearing, what I'm doing my monitor, and, and one of the luxuries I have with this uh, live video feed, I say live video feed, it's recorded live. I don't know if it makes any sense. But um, you can see when I'm talking about an article, um, it pops up on the screen here. So you can watch me in real time talk about something that I have on my monitor. So when it's all said and done, I put everything, all the video stuff in a bag. <laughs> Not the video stuff. T like a, hmm, how do I word it? I put everything in a, s well... I take the video and I post it to YouTube. You know, I, I, I put a opening title, what you're listening to, end title, some captions in between, kind of fancy it up a little bit. So it's kind of like watching Netflix. So here's here's an idea for you guys. If you're tired of watching or you need something to watch Netflix-wise or just something to stream or, or binge watch, by all means, look for Deacon Live on YouTube. And it's a product we call Under the Tent because we are basically we're under a big circus tent here. And um, it's very, I say, <laughs> you know, I don't have a four year degree in film and theater production for any, you know, just for me to throw around and, <laughs> and tell dick jokes all day. But I, production wise, for what I have here without spending a whole lot of money, I do a, a great production video. You can watch it. It's, 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 you know, it, I think it's good. I think it's the value, it's not boring. But for the most part, you can watch this. It's an hour show. Uh, the video tends to be a little bit longer because um, you catch us in between the breaks. And hopefully the breaks aren't as boring as the rest of the show is, if that makes any sense. But we do. We have a, we have a channel called Under the Tent. And uh, just search for Deacon Live on YouTube and you'll find it. Subscribe, like it. You can see all the videos and stuff of, of stuff we do here in the studio. And so one of the things that I do, and I've learned many years ago, is you want to put a uh, what they call like a thumbnail on the on on the main part of the video, so it kind of grabs everyone's attention. So you're you know you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. If you see see the same picture time and time again, it gets kind of boring. Oh, that's a, you know you can't tell one video from another video. So I posted. I always post. A picture that has to deal with whatever topic I'm talking about on that podcast, that that discussion. So the <laughs> the last podcast that we did, gotta watch that. 
was called the one two punch. And I just kind of went, well, you know what? How do I how do I capture the 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 attitude and the the motif around the one two punch episode? So I typed in, I don't know what I typed in, but I came across this picture. I'm going to pull this picture up. Oh, I got to switch screen so you guys can see it. So I pulled this picture up. Where are you at? Oh. And here it is. In all its glory. And I'm going to blow it up a little bit for you so you can see it. Now, this was my, I know. <laughs> this was my landing thumbnail for the <laughs> one two punch uh, YouTube video. Now, for those of you who haven't gone to the YouTube page yet or haven't subscribed, I, I highly recommend that you do it just for this picture alone. But I'm going to describe it to you. So the picture is a guy. I don't know if he's outside or inside. It's a brick wall. He's got a brick wall in front of him. There's a door on the right hand side. Uh, it might be outside of a bathroom or it might be inside a little walkway or something. He's got his pants down around his knees and there's a girl, female, fully dressed. You know, she it must be cold out. She's got a jacket on. And he's sitting like like he's smashed his face or her face into his butt. Now, I say this because there's nothing going on. The girl is not nude. His butt is just it's a side profile of his butt. So all you see is like his right butt cheek. And it looks like he's either sitting on her. I'm going to let you guys, I mean, you can take this any way you want. But I posted this as a thumbnail. And then what I do is I've got several different Facebook pages. So I posted them all on, uh, you know, use the picture as the thumbnail on Facebook. Well, guess what? Well, you know what happened. You know what happened. I ended up in Facebook jail. That was the first time I've ever been in Facebook jail for something that I posted. Now, here's the thing. Do you remember uh, last week, week before, I posted the, the Vietnamese guys, the Filipino guys, the Asian guy who used his breast, his breast, and then drew a woman using and making his breast her breast, and nothing, nothing was flagged, nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. And there was clearly two two nipples there. And then the other picture I posted, which is a man with muscle detail and a female with muscle detail, and both of them are topless. Nothing. Nothing happened at all. This guy, this picture I posted up, red flag. As soon as I posted it up, I got flag. Boom. And all my I've got my own page, which is my real name and everything. And then all the radio stuff pages. Went on every single one of them. All the other now, all the other radio pages. I'm on probation. I'm not allowed to touch those for 30 days or something like that. My personal Facebook page was I was back up in action in 24 hours. But I was like, "Holy shit! Holy, really? This picture is the one that that set it off. This picture is the one that that put me over the edge, and I didn't understand it. I did not understand it. Now I posted, I posted and said a million different things about a million different people." good bad or, or or whatever but this one picture of a guy's butt i'm gonna put my butt right here. <laughs> here's my butt right here see my butt there's my keys too there's my butt all right there's <laughs> i'm gonna put this video on <laughs> facebook and see if they if i get flagged again but i it was it was kind of like an eye opening i sat back for a minute and i go really that that was the, that was the line. I I I felt. What what's the the six six things of um, emotions or whatever? I was angry. I was pissed. I was incredibly pissed. And so I'm searching. You know how to. You know how would you like to resolve this? And I'm clicking on everyone. Clicking them. And then and then, if you would like to dispute this, hell yeah. And I'm sitting there typing dispute this because, you know, if this was anything that was part of anything, part of this and that, the, you know, there was no, what they call pink parts shown, you know, there was nothing, you know, there was no genitals, there was no balls, there was no dick, there was no vagina, there was no labia, there was no nothing, there was no taint, there was no <laughs> balloon knot, there was nothing shown, it was the side of his butt, and the girl was fully clothed, and her, he would look like he was sitting on her 
not sitting on her face, like he pushed it, like, <laughs> and farted on her or something. And <laughs> that's the, uh, but I was put into Facebook jail and it pissed me off. It pissed me off. Even now, I mean, can you tell? Can you tell my voice? I'm still pissed off. I'm still pissed off about it. And so I've got to wait. So all you guys out there, all you listeners out there that are part of the, the Prophet Radio Facebook page, forgive me if I haven't been posting. Um, that's part of my job here at Prophet Radio is to post stuff on it. But I got I got Prophet Radio put on probation. So in 30 days or so, that should come up. But you can still follow me on my personal uh, Facebook page and all my friends out there in Facebook land who are uh, making fun of my Lesur peas can, can still catch me and still all the information for the Deacon Live show on my personal Facebook page. And, uh, hmm. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about um, something that, something else that's not sitting right with me, and I want your opinion on it as well. So stick around. We're going to talk about that in just one sec. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. Make sure you become a subscriber of the show or become a member of our program. And the way you do that is to go to ProfitRadio.com, click on the Members Only section, and you can see a bunch of this crazy stuff that we do. Here in the studio, uh, we have a lot of extra, extra audio clips, extra stuff that we do here. And we want you to be part of that because a lot of this stuff might not make sense to you, but when you hear those clips, you're like, going, ah, that makes total sense. Now, uh, I was talking about the YouTube channel that we have, and that's Deacon Live. All you have to do, it's all one word. So if you hit Deacon Live with a separate word, you're going to get some crazy uh, <laughs> Brit that likes to sing a lot of songs with tight pants on. But if you, uh, Deacon Live, all one word, you can uh, catch our YouTube channel. And like I said, you can binge watch it because it's, it's a well-produced, uh, high-def cameras. I got three different angles here. Uh, we switch screens and... Uh, you can see all the videos and, and the articles that I talk about in real time as I'm talking about them on the main monitor here. Now, something that I did, we were talking about uh, Marion. Remember my son Marion that I don't have? <laughs> he was going to get a football scholarship or something. I called those people back. And if you want to see the actual call, uh, go to the YouTube page. And it's uh, I think it's, uh, it's the one-two punch, and it's the one that says continue or C-O-N-T. And it's, I, there's a small little segment about me talking about it and then the actual phone call. And you'd be surprised of, of what actually happened when I got the uh, person on the line and and uh, got a hold of the manager or tried to get a hold of the manager and, and our discussion on that. So make sure you check that out because that was very informative and very, very uh, eye-opening. And uh, the results were kind of um, pleasing to some and unpleasing to others. Now, my wife, like I said, it's Bachelor in Paradise weekend, and she is down in Florida. Uh, she is getting um, ready to go to her niece's wedding. Now, her niece is, oh God, I, don't, I have no idea how old she is, 23, 24, 22, I don't know. I don't know. But she's been dating this guy for about a year, one year. Uh, she's in school still. She's in law school, and I think he's out. He's a IT technician, builder. He's got a great job. He's a, you know, it's technology. He's a technology-based job, and that's the way the whole world is going. They're getting married. I said, what? Yep, they're getting married. So she's down there, going to be part of the wedding, and that's, you know, that's her brother's kids. Um, so she wants to be, you know, of course, you know, be part of it and everything. So good for her. She's going down there. But after a year of being, after a year of dating, they're getting married. Now, the reason why I say that is because, I know that the the marriage rate is is completely out of whack, um, it's especially under the age of you know twenty. Let's say twenty six. People are not getting married, not like they used to uh, twenty years ago. I mean, my wife here. I'm a prime example. I didn't get married until I was forty, thirty nine, forty, and my wife is seven years younger than I. So you know, she was thirty two, thirty three years old before we got married, and we dated for. Uh, it wasn't sing or double digits <laughs> how long we dated, but we dated for a long time before we got married. And I say dated, dated, lived together, uh, established, you know, joint bank accounts, blah, 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 and all the stuff that goes with that. Now, so she's down there, and I wish them all the, the luck in the world. Best of luck to you. Best wishes. 
uh, they're getting married. Boom, that'll be done. And I, I have no idea what their future plans are because I think he has an apartment, but she still lives at home. So it might be one of those, excuse me, what's that? It might be one of those old fashioned. It might be one of those old fashioned where he, she moves in with him and, you know, they start their their journey together, which is great. Beautiful story. They're great. But here's something that I have a question about. So last year, I think it was last year about this time, I did a podcast about my a good friend of mine uh, passed away. Uh, he committed suicide and he had a wife and three kids. Now, we grew up together. Uh, here's a little backstory. We all grew up together. He was, I think, five years younger than I was. So when I was 18, he was 13, but he, I was like the brother to him. I, I don't know the, what I was to him, but he um, he got into, you know, as, as we got older, I went this path and he went that path and his path was very rocky, very rough. Um, got not, hold on, didn't get married, had a child with a girl whose path was rocky too. She straightened herself up, had another child with a girl, and then had had a total of three children together. Then I think they eventually got married. Now here's here's where I'm getting at is somewhere in that process, his mom bought a house for them to live in because he had no job. She was barely going to school and barely making any money. Um, so he, his mom bought them a house for essentially for the grandkids to live in, you know, I'll buy you a house. You, you maintain this and maintain that on it. And you know, you do the utilities and the house will be paid for. You don't have to worry about a mortgage. So they moved in the house literally across the street from the mom, the grandmother now. His mom that bought it for him. So he committed suicide so the house is essentially she's living in it with the three grandkids. Now the grandkids are old enough now. I think one's either in high school or finishing up high school. One's starting high school and the other one's just in the middle of junior high. So I saw a post the other day that said, Hey, I'm selling my house from her. Hey, I'm selling my house. If anyone wants to buy it, yada, yada, yada. And I kind of went, well, that's that's weird. That's a weird statement to make on Facebook that you would sell a house that the father of your child who killed themselves, his mom bought for you guys and now you're selling it. So my my question is, and I was talking to a realtor friend of mine and she was like, "Well, I I I know I've been in these situations with um customers and stuff and her only answer was make sure it goes through probate. Make sure that someone's name is on the deed to the house and all that. But I was kind of stunned. I was taken back that the, 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 the mom, I know, am I computing you? I hope I'm not computing you. The mom of the three kids had the right to sell the house. And in my opinion, I thought it was kind of rude Unless she's moving out of town, unless she's moving somewhere. But I don't think the grandmother would not like to have the kids right across the street from them. So I don't know what the deal is legal, legally. I think my wife could probably tell me a lot as far as <laughs> she gets all into that stuff. But for the most part, she's selling the house that the grandmother bought them for all the grandkids to live in. And so I don't know. And then, you know, one of the nephews and stuff in the family said, you know, did you let your mother-in-law know that she, you're selling the house? Anyways. So, uh, if you know anything or, or any details as far as leg legally, what they can do, um, I know I, I, I'm trying not to put people's names in there, but you guys can figure it out. If, if you listen to the podcast and go, just give us a call here at the station at 407-448-8800, Texas live at any time at the queen city studio at that same number. But I just thought it was rude. I, I took it as rude that she was selling a house that the grandmother bought them 
um, for the grandkids to live in. And now that he's dead, she has no physical ties to the grandmother other than the grandkids. And she's like, I'm out of here. I'm going on to go do something else. That's the way I took it. That's the way I took it. I thought it was rude. I thought it was rude. Hmm. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about that as well. So uh, when we come back, uh, I'm gonna. I'm not a doctor, by the way, but I read a lot of stuff, and I know there's people out there that swear up and down through Grey's Anatomy how to fix things and do stuff. You know, oh, let me think about my Grey's Anatomy thing. Oh, that's stupid. When we come back, I'm gonna get into some articles I read online. Are they good? Are they bad about being a doctor? Or, or what am I saying? And when we come back. I'm going to discuss some cures that are simple, some cures that are kind of complex, and some cures I bet you didn't even know had these kind of side effects. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. I did not like that at all. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. Um, I'd like to thank, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, everyone for downloading us. Um, we appreciate all that. I see the numbers um, and they just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. You guys have done a great job, excellent job. Uh, and I'd like to thank each and I wish I could thank each and one of you guys personally, but this is my personal level as far as thanking you guys. We, we appreciate it. We've gone to, uh, gone from just a small, um, a small little show on I think I uploaded it to SoundCloud at one time and in three years time we we're we're doing excellent numbers and I and it's because of you guys and I I want to thank each and every one of you one group of people I'd like to thank if I could figure out who they are because I see all the numbers uh that's part of my job here is to look through all the stats and who's getting what and who's it literally says how they're how people are there's that nat again I'm gonna bomb this room again how people are downloading um, Deacon Live's podcast, you know, whether it's through your phone, whether it's Android phone or your Apple phone, whether it's a PC, whether you're picking it up off of Facebook, which is great. I love the people. I love seeing that on the Facebook because I post it on Facebook, and that means that you guys that are out there, my friends, my family on Facebook, are actually clicking on that link and, and going to it. And I see that, and I, I appreciate that. And continue to do it and continue to share or if you hate the program just <laughs> give us a thumbs down but one group of people that i cannot figure out and i've dove into this and i actually pulled up the website now four percent it doesn't sound like a whole lot but when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of downloads four percent comes from this one website and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna give it to you because i looked it up it's uh, breezesgrill.com and that's B-R-E-E-Z-E-S grill.com and I punched it up actually you know what I'm going to do that you guys watching if you're watching on the uh, on the old Facebook feed here or on the uh, YouTube feed let's punch that up www.bre hold on let me turn this around bre Z's grill.com we'll see what happens oh <laughs> well we could buy it for two thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars it's for sale but I guess they must have just flipped this is last year's numbers I was looking at or last year's last month's numbers I was looking at so it was just weird uh, that this had four percent. So it's out there. If you guys want a big audience, if you want a flagship for your um, new website, go to breezes, breezesgrill.com, and you can automatically have over uh, over uh, several thousand listeners or, or clicks to your page. And But yet it's like $2,000 for the website. So anyways, I just saw that, and I was just like, that's kind of weird. That's weird because most of them just says you know iTunes, and then it's got all the, the IP addresses and stuff as far as where they're connecting from. I know that's just boring, boring stuff. Oh. Now I, I I get a lot of my information from Facebook, and I'm proud. I'm proud to say that. 
Uh, the reason why I say I'm proud to say that is because I do a lot of scrolling, and that's the name of the show. We scroll through all your Facebook feeds, I, not yours personally, but through your um, through the news feed. And what I'm clicking on everything, make sure I have everything. All right, and what actually um, people are talking about and people are listening about. And sometimes you scroll too fast through your Facebook feed and, and you miss the whole entire thing. Or you've seen it so many times, but you, you want someone literally to tell it to you. Well, here we go. Do you have, <laughs> get ready, because it's going to get weird. Um, there is a, this is from, this is no lie, uh, justiceadvocates.com. Cash settlements for genitalia or anal bacteria causes hosp hospitalization or surgery. That's right. If you've had any of these drugs, I Ivocana, Jardis, or F A R X I G A, Farxia. <laughs> God, these names. Well, they're all linked to genital and anal bacteria, which requires hospitalization and surgery. Victims do not have do not have to suffer in silence anymore with these painful and serious symptoms. Victims and their families may be owed compensation. No obligation or review. It only takes 60, 60 seconds. Now, I guess what's happening is these drugs are causing a bacteria, <laughs> flesh-eating bacteria in your genitals and your anal. Well, I guess because that's where you would disperse it, I guess. So my question is, and it doesn't get into details because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a justice for advocates or just advocates. They want a cash settlement and they want you to sign up and stuff. But these pills, these, um, if you're watching the screen right here, these three things, I don't know what they're used for, but if you, if you're taking these pills, uh, there's gotta be some kind of bacteria or something or some kind of, um, chromosome, not chromosome, some kind of, um, what's a, what's yeast? Yeast is a organism. There's some kind of organism in there that causes or creates genital or anal bacteria, which causes um, flesh eating, <laughs> flesh eating bacteria in your genitals and stuff. So, and if you've been taking these pills, just a little warning out there for you, uh, justiceadvocates.com. Uh, you could get a cash settlement if you are missing your genitals or your anal stuff. So there's the, my message on that. And this is, I mean, it's true. It's true. I know sometimes it gives me a headache. It gives me friggin' the, 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 the ads that you see on the Facebook feed and stuff. And you're like, going, what, what is it? Anal what? Now here's something that was very interesting to me is, um, studies have shown that it, when you have a headache, speaking of headache, uh, when you have a headache, there's a lot of things that incorporate what gives you a headache, whether it be high blood pressure, uh, not enough, uh, liquids or fluids in your body. Um, sinuses have a lot to deal with it. Um, and a lot of people will take medicine for it. They will take Tylenol. They'll take, you know, um, I like to take, uh, what's the naproxen sometimes, but I got to watch my whole day. You know, you got to plan out your whole day for naproxen. You, if you take naproxen in the morning, you got to watch what you do all day long. Not that it's a, uh, hallucinogen and stuff it messes at least it messes with my stomach so i have to be careful what i eat with it um but their studies have shown now that most people experience a headache there are many ca causes from just sitting in front of the computer all day long is probably one of the most commons the best thing to do is is to having a headache pill or having a headache is to take a pill and drink plenty of water however new researchers have found that um it, the University of Greenwich conducted a study showing that about two beers can reduce the pain from a headache up to 25%. Alcohol can be compared to an opioid drug such as codeine, and the effects is more powerful than anything that you can get without getting a prescription for it. So one of the most popular painkillers contains a paracetamol say that right <laughs> it's recommended that the um alcohol content of the blood to get rid of these headaches is 0 0.08 now <laughs> hold on a minute i believe 0 0.08 is the legal limit or illegal limit for driving a car so if you've got a headache and you 
you know, down a couple beers to get yourself to 0.08 to get rid of your headache. Well, yeah, no shit. But you can't drive a car back home. However, research has emphasized that harmful alcohol, harmful alcohol can be is definitely not a long-term solution to headaches, although at times it could be useful. However, the researchers are hoping that the studies will help provide and develop new medicines that will treat pain and headaches. And, you know, you would think they would use some kind of derivative from beer to make an all-natural pill, because for the most part, beer is somewhat natural. Um, what is it? Uh, water, hops, barley, um, and a couple other things, flavor and stuff like that. But you would think that they would make some kind of natural pill that would stimulate or simulate the same effects that alcohol would give you, or two beers would give you. They didn't say alcohol. They just said beers and that would give you to um, relieve your headache. So what do you think about that? I mean, yeah, if you have a headache, you know, what's the best thing after a long night of partying? Grab a beer, drink one in the morning. They say it's hair of the dog, right? Hair of the dog, two beers, gets rid of headaches. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, you always hear people... At the uh, at the office, going, oh, I need a beer right now. I have a headache, you know, or I'm whatever. So there's some truth to that matter. So if you see hear someone say, you know, two beers. Now here's a funny thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to get a little serious here in a second. Um, when I worked at Home Depot, I spent uh, many years. I spent over 20 years at Home Depot, and I I I left after 20 years. Uh, did my time, and in our and people do not believe me when they give you your um, employee packet. If you and the Home Depot employee packet is friggin' huge. If you literally read your employee package at Home Depot, where it says about uh, you know drugs and alcohol, and there is a section in there that says on your one hour lunch break you are allowed to have two 16 ounce beers during your lunch break. So, it, no, really, it does say that in the actual um, the employee packet. So when I was living in Orlando, I worked at the Home Depot right there by the Florida Mall. Ooh, 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 Sky Lake <laughs> in the house. I know that joke's not going to go very far. But um, they actually, uh, there was a Bennigan's in the parking lot. Now, if you know anything about Bennigan's, it is a full, they have 150 taps and all that stuff. We used to go over there on our lunch breaks and we take our lunch breaks towards the end of our shift, you know, and we go over there and we'd pound a pitcher or two of beer uh, between, you know, a group of us and then go back to work, finish out our day and then go home for the day. So we took advantage. We did it liberally, you know, took, you know, loose interpretation of the rules at, at Home Depot. And, uh, but we were, we pretended that we were clear minded. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about a, a group of people that you might not know that are having a hard time being clear-minded, especially going through a very traumatic and a very life-changing episode in their life. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and do all that stuff, all our social networks, and be part of the whole Deacon Live experience. And make sure you subscribe to us on wherever you listen to podcasts or podcasts on all your podcatchers out there. And give us a review, click like, or if you hate us, make sure you really rip us good because I'm going to rip you back if you say, ah, I didn't like his voice, it's nasally, or I didn't like whatever. But make sure you, you write something that's solid. Now, something else out there that, that's solid is um, the way we treat uh, cancer patients. Now, I know that you can you can spiral down this big, long staircase as far as cancer is a, um, what do they call it? A, 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 it's a money machine. They have the cure for cancer. They just don't want to cure cancer because it's a money-making machine. Now, if you know anyone that's been through cancer, you always see on your Facebook feed, you always see cancer sucks or fuck cancer or something of that nature. Now, if you've ever learned or known anyone that's gone through cancer or just like um, when you see the people that say I'm a survivor and they've gone through chemotherapy. Now, chemotherapy, uh, there's a pill um, 
that helps with the chemotherapy. And then for those of you who, who don't know what chemotherapy is, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're shocking the bo your body with radiation. You're shocking your body and all your cells stop working. Everything stops. <laughs> so that's why your hair falls out. That's why everyone feels weak. That's why everything happens when you go through chemotherapy and it just drains you just you've heard stories and stories and I'm not going to drag into this but one thing that I didn't know or didn't understand or or didn't know about until just recently is um there's something that's called chemo brain or chemo fog now what that is chemo brain is a common term used for cancer survivors to describe the thinking and memory problems that can occur after a cancer treatment, chemo brain. It can also be called chemo fog. Chemotherapy related cognitant cognit <laughs> impaired dysfunction is what it is. Uh, living with these effects of chemo brain after intense chemotherapy treatments is one of the things that, for the least, uh, wasn't explained to me in true depth or explained to the person going through the treatment in true depth. What you always hear the doctor says is you may have some cognitive, cognitive like myself, <laughs> speed and memory recall issues, which is loosely paraphrased to quote um, that I remember. It's a loosely paraphrased quote, which remembers that, you know, the doctor in the office is, is trying to help you. But I mean, for myself, when you say chemo brain, you you don't know what that is. If you've had chemo brain, which means, you know, you have this, you know, even if you're cured and stuff, there are still things that aren't firing right in your brain once going through this treatment. Because believe it or not, I mean, I say believe it or not, I don't think I'm not belittling anyone, not belittling, but I'm not, you know, everyone doesn't know, other than those that have been through cancer, what actually is involved when you go through chemotherapy. And sometimes it just literally just drains your body and sometimes you, your body can't fight back from that and the people out there that struggle with with cancer and being a survivor um, they've struggled with it for a long time so when you if you know someone that's a survivor and has gone through chemotherapy and just have just I say take a breath take a minute and understand that their you know their speed their memory recall is a little bit slower because of this treatment um, and it is a um, it's a well known fact that, that chemo brain or chemo fog is out there, which is it's frightening. If you were to say you know you could live another twenty years with this cancer, or uh, we can you know nuke you, put you through all this treatment, but your brain's going to be scrambled for a while. I I don't know I don't know how to do that. You know it, it's one of those what ifs. You can't you can't say what you're going to say until it actually comes down and, and hits you and affects you the way it has millions of people in this country. And I, and I feel for you, you know, I know my mom, my, not to bring it down on my personal level. My mom's getting older. My mom, now she doesn't have cancer, but she's got like type 23 diabetes or whatever the worst case scenario diabetes. She's on dialysis. She's constantly weak and and just for her going through dialysis you know granted her brain has not been you know gone through the chemotherapy and stuff but just her body itself has a hard time recovering and she can barely uh, she calls me everyone's name in the family except for mine you know it's one of those you know tim mark uh and calls me the dog's name you know muffy uh she, what is your name De deacon please you know don't <laughs> i'm like hey all right <laughs> we're name tag when i get over there but she's exhausted and but I, so I understand to a certain point what it's like dealing with someone that's got some kind of um, issue as far as memory and stuff. So just just keep that in mind uh, if you're going through it or or going to start going through it or you've been through it. Uh, I I you know I understand uh, for the most part what's happening. I just didn't know it was that bad as far as um going when you go through cancer that your brain gets kind of I don't want to say scramble but it, it kind of slows everything down for you. And for the most part, that's what chemo does. It slows everything down, and eventually your body fights it off. Or I could be completely wrong on that. I don't know. Uh, I know. Ooh. Roller coaster. Roller coaster. When we come back, I'm going to get into, um, we're going to go to the top of this roller coaster ride, and we're going to do some loop-de-loops. -loop. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live. And uh, I'd like to thank all you guys for uh, listening to us again. <laughs> I've done it a million times. But something I want to say is, uh, no, I don't want to say anything. I'm going to do this again. Stop. Done. Delete. Start that over. Doesn't happen often. Does not happen often. I was trying to figure out what I was going to say. Welcome back to Deacon Live. If you're watching this on the under the tent, I'm waving to the camera. Hi, hi like you're going to wave back. Oh, so stupid. But on the, uh, the under the tent, which is the uh, what we call the video feed, the live capturing video here in the studio, um, I bought this little, I'm going to show it to the camera. I bought this little light. Uh, they're selling at Walmart, and it's called like a selfie light or something. And you could see, see, can you, let me see, make sure I'm on the right picture here. Yeah. So you can see it's a little light. You're supposed to put on your uh, your camera when you're doing like live videos because sometimes on the front of the camera it doesn't have a, a light. So I've been using this down here just kind of because this gets from like the microphone down gets kind of shadowy and I just want to have that light there. It's like five bucks. Thought it was kind of cool. Tried it out. If you like it, great. If not, yeah, I'll probably squash it. It'll probably run out of batteries and stuff before. Actually, it USB charge, which is great. I love when uh, everything got a USB charger on it. It's gonna scrape every time. I gotta fix all this at the end of the episode. So this is the light that I use for now, just to see how it is. It's got three modes on it, and um, so it gets kind of dark. Like I said, you know, from here down. Um, for those of you in Florida, I want you to look up at the sky. As soon as the sun goes down, I want you to go out there and look at the sky. Hopefully, it's a clear night. Hopefully, it's a clear night. You know, usually after a hurricane storm comes through, um, the skies are clear because everything's been sucked out of the atmosphere and there's no clouds in the sky and all the stars are out in the sky. But you have to get away from like downtown or big lights or anything like that. The ISS, the International Space Station, is actually flying over. Florida, it's going to, the route it's going to take, oh, let me, no, I'm not going to do it. The route it's going to take, it's going to actually, about 9 o'clock at night, you're going to see this one bright star. It's going to go from Fort, Fort, Myers, uh, Fort Myers all the way up through Jacksonville. So as you're out at night, 9 o'clock, look up in the sky. If you see this, like, little, bright little star kind of just moving across the sky, the skyline or the sky tapestry, the backlit thing, you know what I'm saying. That's the International Space Station, and it's making its way across Florida and stuff. So if you got nothing to do, or if you can think about it, set your alarm for about 8 30, 9 o'clock, and on a clear night, you should be able to see the International Space Station kind of just zing right by overhead. And you know what? That's not the only thing that's out there. I've done this many times here at the French. Um, I let the dogs out. Uh, they want to go out for whatever reason at three o'clock in the morning. And so I go out there and it's pitch black. We got a little, one little spotlight down there by the barn, but for the most part, it's dark. And if it's a clear sky out there, I'll sit out there and look and, you know, just to see satellites will do the same thing. Actual, if the satellite's large enough, it'll do the same thing. You'll see this one little dot Bright little dot. Doesn't blink, doesn't do anything, just kind of moves. It's one little star that kind of just skates across the sky. And you're like, oh, that's a satellite or something. And oh, with all the, speaking of the hurricanes and stuff, trimming trees and cutting trees down, um, you know, it's always a pain in the ass because a lot of times homeowners don't have a chainsaw. A lot of homeowners don't have the, the large equipment and stuff to, to cut down trees trees or big branches of any size um, that have fallen over you know for the most part they don't now here's the thing i've always um wondered how how do they trim the trees that are like on the highways and stuff that are close to the power lines and they trim them like so nice it's like they had you know the little knife that you have at um at thanksgiving to carve the turkey it almost looks like they've trimmed those trees with that kind of knife now i'm going to switch screens here I want you to look at this. This is 
Let's see if it's got sound. I hope it's got sound. Here we go. Oh. I blow this up. There we go. Th this is a helicopter that has. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this so we can see it. This is a helicopter that's got a long cable and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten huge, they're probably three foot in diameter saw blades on them. And he's literally just dragging it across the trees. He goes forward in the trees and back in the tree. It's literally the essential of a long turkey carving knife, but it's using uh, circular blades. And this thing's flying, listen. Just shaving it, shaving them. Look at it. Boom. And now I don't know how big, how large of a branch it can do. And it's just a helicopter with this thing on a rope. I'm sure it's it's powered. It looks like it has a cable or something. And the helicopter's just kind of sitting up there. Little dragon flying, little helicopter, just shaving the trees, shaving the trees. Cutting all the limbs away from the power lines and stuff. So when it when it freezes or snows, <laughs> it doesn't mess up anything. Uh, so before I let you go, I'm going to tell you a way to make at least $1,300. Do you guys want to make $1,300? Well, yes, we do, Deacon. How do we do that? There is a company out there that will pay you $1,300 to watch. Do you like movies? Duh. We love movies, Deacon. Well, there's a guy or there's a company out there that will pay you $1,300 to watch 13 classic horror movies by Halloween. That's right. This job will pay you to watch 13 classic horror movies by Halloween. The, the company will provide a survival kit with a flashlight, blanket, popcorn, candy, and some of some Stephen King paraphernalia to set the stage. You are going to watch, um, actually, usdish.com is going to hire, it uh, doesn't say how many people, to watch 13 selective films based on Stephen King's chilling novel, Carrie, the original or the remake, you can pick whatever you want, Children of the Corn, Christine, Creepshow, Cujo, Dreamcatcher, It, um, the original or 2000, the, the new one, Miss, Pet Cemetery, and on and on and on. All films will be, will be provided by the company as well as Survivor Kit, which I said the blanket and stuff. Uh, you will also be sent a Fitbit to help track your heart rate during the movie as far as like the intense scenes and stuff like that. So when you watch all 13 movies and you report back to them, you will be paid $1,300 in cash money. And you can spend it however you want. So what you have to do is you have to fill out online a... <laughs> an application 200 words or less now 200 words or less 200 words is not a whole lot i mean most of uh things in school you had to write were, was at least 500 words 200 words basically saying um why you should be the right candidate to watch this um horror fest and deadline is october so october 15th so i actually i filled it out i filled it out and um we'll see uh they should be contact hopefully they'll contact me and that'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool to sit there and watch all 13. My wife hates horror movies. She hates them. And when she's not around, like this Bachelor weekend, um, I like to watch horror movies all day long. I'll even go back and watch like the old ones. Now, I don't watch them because they're scary and stuff. I think there's a certain genre. Well, there's a certain motif about the horror movies that makes them different than regular movies. For example, regular movies, I don't know if you know this or not, you know, I went to school, like I said, <laughs> for several years to get my degree in, in film and theater production. So you, it, it's, uh, if you ever watch like a theater play, there's an act one, act two, and act three. Movies do the exact same thing. There's act one. If you watch it, you know, it, it's setting up what's going on. Act two is the, the problem and everything that something falls apart and then they try to fix it. And act three is them fixing it and coming to a resolved end and make sure that you like the person that the movie was about. 
at the end. You know, do I like this person? So horror movies don't. They just it they're they are willy nilly free. They can do whatever they want as far as horror movies. So I know I bored you enough, and I hope um, some of the information I gave you on this uh, week's podcast is beneficial for you. If not, um, pass it on to someone who it might be beneficial for. Uh, on that note, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for putting up with me for the last hour. I'm going to let you go, get back to what you got to do. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You can see this video as well on YouTube and uh, all the stuff in between. On behalf of... Everyone out there that's making this possible, this podcast possible, I'd like to thank you. And my name is the Deacon saying good night and good night. Oh, 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 o